Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, depending on where you are, and welcome to the Reuse Company webinars. You will be muted during the webinar, but if you have any questions or comments, you can use the questions section. We will answer all your questions at the end of the webinar. If you have any technical issues, please use the chat box or send an email to support at reusecompany.com. The webinar will be recorded, and in a few days, we will send you the link to the recording. The topic for today is Taming the Systems Engineering Lifecycle Using Connectivity and Interoperability, the CES Engineering Studio. My name is uh, Cecilia Carson, and I will be hosting today's webinar. With me, I have Juan Llorenz, CTO at the, the Reuse Company, and he is today's presenter. This is the agenda for the webinar. First, we will have a short presentation of the company and the presenter. Then Juan will talk about the system lifecycle management. Next, we will have an introduction to the CES Engineering Studio. After that, we will take a look into connectivity within CES Engineering Studio and interoperability between connections. Then we will see technical management processes digitalization and lifecycle management digitalization. Finally, we will have some time for questions. So first, a few words about us. The reuse company is a tool vendor specialized in the application of reuse methods, semantic technologies, and artificial intelligence to improve the digitalization of the systems engineering lifecycle. We promote lifecycle management methodologies guided by reuse based on a knowledge-centric approach, supporting the notion of authoritative uh, source of truth, offering connectivity to everything unlimited interoperability, and providing full support to technical management, as in ISO 15288. We are usually known in the market for our software tools, RQA, Quality Studio, RAT authoring tools, Traceability Studio, VNV Studio, and KM Knowledge Manager. Now, let me introduce you to the presenter. Juan Llorenz is a systems engineering professor at the Universidad Carlos III de Madrid. He is the CTO at the Reuse Company and he is a board member of the Spanish chapter of INCOSE. Juan is a member of the INCOSE Requirements Working Group, the Product Line Engineering Working Group and the Knowledge Management Working Group. He also has the CSEP and ESEP certifications. So let's start then with today's topic. Hello, Juan. Hello. Can you hear me well? Uh, no, not very well. <laughs> <What> is <it? laughs> it is a low, low level of signal, or? Yeah, now it's better. <laughs> OK, yeah, we are. So um, good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening to everybody. I hope that you um, enjoy the webinar I'm going to present. Thank you, Cecilia, very much for the introduction. And let's start quickly. My intention, as I hope you see in, in the screen, is to um, show you the new product being developed in a reuse company. And I'm going to put a little bit of context in initially about uh, systems engineering lifecycle management, what it means. And we will get into the um, engineering studio, as it is called. We usually call it SES, SES. It's a kind of a strange story about it. We wanted to name it engineering studio, but uh, some of our customers already uh, running it and uh, better testers like to say it SES because eventually it's much easier. So we are now starting to understand that probably the name in the market would be SES. But anyway, the name and the trademark, everything is SES engineering studio. And some of the features of the CES Engineering Studio, which are connectivity, interoperability, technical management, digitalization, and uh, lifecycle management, digitalization. So that's a little bit what I'm going to introduce you. And uh, one of the most um, strange things we are going to do in a webinar, particularly me, that I'm not so used to do the webinars, it's more in commercial people, but this time, because of the first one, has been uh, asked the technical department to to do it, and that's the reason why I am here. So um, we are going to do something a little bit strange, which is 
uh, we usually do demonstrations during the webinar and we are going to do of course but we have so many that we're we going to do is i'm going to show you very short number of demonstrations just to 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 give you the taste of how it is being defined the engineering studio and then i'm going to name quite a lot of demonstrations or small video snippets that can be available for you so please if you have some interest in uh, some of the videos that i name during the webinar please just tell me or at the end write in the questions to cecilia and uh, we will go more in detail in those webinars and sorry in those uh, videos that you are interested in more than me just going towards uh, whatever I think is interesting and perhaps not for you. So that's a little bit what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, tell you things, then I'm going to show you a couple of, uh, of uh, video snippets, but then I'm going to name, in this video we do that, in this video we do that, and then please feel free to send uh, to Cecilia whatever interest you feel that is nice for you. So let's start uh, initially with, uh, no, not that one. Let's start with our positioning. What is the SES says um, as a tool and where it is positioned? And first we have to get into the PLM or XLM, X Lifecycle Management Suite. There's quite a lot of, of um, acronyms going along. You can see that in 2000, oh, um, 2017, that was a little bit the vision that uh, one of the colleagues uh, in, the, in the domain of PLM uh, just describe, I think, very well. This slide, I, I like this slide very much because you can see the technical management uh, processes here. You can see the kind of infrastructural layers that exist. I'm not so extremely interested in them, but particularly in this one and in this one. So this, this uh, organization is now you know, technical processes in this side. And then here, you can see something that is a classical in my opinion, and I understand that you also can um, agree with me, that this is a typical approach in the different organizations. So you have authoring uh, systems, quite a lot of authoring systems. Okay, you can have a requirements management tool, you can have uh, manufacturing uh, tools in, the, in your factories, and you can have uh, logical design, electromagnetic compatibility, or hazard analysis tools, Excel, Microsoft Word project, I mean, hundreds of different tools doing whatever is necessary in your project. This is a name in a nice way, authoring systems in this slide. And uh, then um, what they usually describe is that there's a layer of collaboration because these authoring systems, as you can see, they don't collaborate, or at least that's what Igner says. Uh, and then uh, there's an, a notion here called engineering backbone, which is quite nice to say that uh, this is a good idea it is a good idea but it of course does not exist today it is a nice intention of inners to say that of course if everything would be connected at this backbone it would be very nice with everything traced but the reality is this, that doesn't exist in the market the uh, maturity neither the standards needed the capability to do that what it is described in the paper so it's more a need than what is exists today and then there's another big problem in, in 2017 here, which is that uh, Martin didn't really connect or, I mean, uh, make a shadow part of, a, of, of um, um, covering between something which is in the market called ALM, you know what it is, application lifecycle management, a, a kind of PLM described for software products and a PLM a little bit more un understood today in the market as whatever comes from the mechanical part, from the physical part, okay? So both of them try now to cover everything and that, that's a little bit what it happened, but Martin himself, I will go back to that one. Martin himself in 2021, he understood that it is uh, uh, indeed, uh, that was indeed not so proper. And I indeed myself think that this is a little bit like that. So PLM tries to cover everything just up to the fabrication or production uh, process, technical process. And there's a kind of coverage. PLM is not covering software, which by the way, in this, uh, in this part, it is described somewhere here, there it is. So I don't steal myself by this distribution, but, um, but I think he is putting some order in, in, in reality. I think this is a little bit more chaotic than what it is in this uh, slide. Okay, ALM and PLM are not clearly having its, its position. Uh, and in between, we like very much um, the approach of SIM data, uh, and SIM data is uh, giving some solutions for this uh, kind of um, engineering backbone. 
and uh, of course there's many names for it uh, one of them is uh, as they say bill of information a bill of materials coming from the uh, production part of the plm uh product uh, sorry um pbs uh, product breakdown structure is something coming from the let's let's say b side the left side of the b model you can call repository or um, authoritative source of truth from the reuse parts and that's ourselves so everybody's trying to name what it would be nice to be this common or central repository for everything so let's this is my introduction so let's now get into uh, SES SES engineering studio what is it well, the name the name that we can coin would be the, the, the SES engineering studio is the software solution of the reuse company to improve the digitalization processes authoring tools and integration and automation of the system life cycle by important following the iso 15200 and the ada guidelines so these these guidelines these for us that comes in the 15288 are very important you have 30 processes but plus one and our intention in the in the session in the studio is that if you want to have a manual a user's manual not but a manual of what is says you could get this book the uh, the handbook of systems engineering and in principle what it's to be done there is described in the, in the handbook so that's the intention of says to cover and adapt its uh, content to what it is described in the handbook so in a way we think that this can be a good a very good approach so we call we call our offer systems engineering lifecycle management which is another soup in between the xlm or plm alm slm or whatever so our intention of course is to cover everything from beginning to end but we think that what we offer in in ses is together the combination of plm and alm but with a big difference and is that if you see in, in Martin Agnes, the one that we just described before, if you see here, there's not in any side, not in any place, where are the technical management processes? Where they are, where they should be, to where, to which technical process should be then they be, be applied. And our intention in the definition of the engineering studio is to make them horizontal, to cover them everything that we are describing. So the notion of SES is, let's you will see now let's uh, work in connectivity to cope with the uh, authoring tools with the, all the different sorts of authoring tools we talked before and then create interoperability between them and manage all the technical processes so you will see here it is the description of the main capabilities okay the first one would be of course that we intend to digitalize the systems engineering life cycle management okay so that means to give solution to the processes that exist in the ISO 15288. The, the, then starting with the red features or capabilities, the first one is we don't want to do it by you selecting us as the core tool. We want to do it by you reusing your tools, those that you already have with the people you have trained in each one of them, with the skills and knowledge and capabilities that you have, and of course, with the assets that you have been producing when you were using those tools. So that's first thing is that we need SES or SES to connect to your tools. The second uh, big, well, you can see that there are semantic analysis and authoring and all, all this stuff that if you know us from the past, which I hope that you do, then you understand that we are very good at technical management processes, quality, verification, validation, traceability, knowledge management, information management, all those technical management processes is what we have been selling in the market for the last 25 years. So I hopefully understand that this is, we, are, we feel very comfortable there. So what we are doing now, if we say it in that way, is all the technical management processes that we had, now it's time for us to to democratize or democrat make democratic them towards whatever connection that we do once we have connectivity solved in principle then we would like to have interoperability to digitalize um, uh, the different activities that conform complex projects particularly connections between processes most most of the time technical processes usually are flowing from one to each other so you describe, in some cases, you describe your, your stakeholder requirements and you would like, in a way, to map the stakeholder needs to your system capabilities. 
I've seen many, many times several companies that simply have system requirements in a kind of product blind engineering approach. And then they would simply like to connect the needs of the customer with the system capabilities they have. So in their case, it could be a mapping. And this mapping can, have, of course, automatically, can be automatically man managed in a way, okay? So you describe your requirements uh, at stakeholder level and sometimes you can map them with existing system requirements. And suddenly you can give, for example, a, cl a clear um, expense of the system to be developed. These kind of things mean interoperability between layers of technical processes. Once we have connectivity and interoperability, we of course uh, have um, the intention to provide technical management support to whatever connectivity connection that you have done. So as soon as you connect to a tool, one of your tools, as soon as you connect the tool to the engineering studio, you can have quality, verification, validation, traceability, configuration management, decision management, knowledge management, life cycle management, information management, et cetera, to the content of this tool. That's the intention, okay? And of course, finally, even if we had just uh, briefly mentioned before, the uh, intention is to be able to manage life cycle, uh, to, to create life cycle uh, processes where you flow from one activity to the other based on the connection so for example you want to write your stakeholder requirements in microsoft word and then you want to send them and transform them into system requirements but because of whatever reason you can have them inside uh, ibm doors and then at the same time you want to create architectural models in capella but at the end you send the logical architecture in cameo and so on that's a little bit the intention so I have described all that previously. Let me show you a little bit what are the intention of the typical situation that exists in your organization. So most of the times you can have a strategic office somewhere and CEO that are using their own tool. The business department are using some of them or others to do whatever things they usually communicate. They have to communicate in whatever way. And the project office has their own tools, of course, and their own needs. The product or program office, of course, have their other own, uh, own tools and the same for the system design. Sometimes you have a customer, Minister of Defense or whatever, uh, that, that uh, forced you to follow some kind of guidelines and rules that must be also included for traceability purposes. And then, of course, perhaps you have some suppliers that need their own uh, ecosystem or tools. So at the end, what you have is hundreds of companies having uh, hundreds of tools and you would like to have a common way of managing the system. That's where we are, okay? Very quickly, I would like now to, to describe how the architectures, different architectures are in the engineering studio. The functional architecture I have been describing you, connectivity workbench, and then we have all those technical management processes besides interoperability. So you see quality uh, management, VNB management, change management, traceability management, extensibility management for creating your, your own connections interoperability that we said, and then authoring that we have had, and life cycle management, and then some, someone else to come, okay? So um, that, that was the physical, the functional, let's say the physical architecture, no interesting for this webinar. Servers here and there, and they might demilitarize zone for needs and connections to different tools here and there in the web and in not the web and so on. On regards to the applications architecture, uh, you can see that the intention of the SSS uh, running is to connect hundreds of tools. So you can have users having their own tools or their, the tools they're using, uh, Office, and the, and the SS should be the orchestrator of all that. In regards to the, the data architecture, for those of you who know us and have been uh, knowing us in, in the past, you know that we work with the notion of repository that have been done in the last 20 years, 25 years. So we still maintain the ontology based on two forms, the, the knowledge base where we work with all the semantics and the artificial intelligence and the asset store where we represent the uh, content of the connections, okay? And then uh, in regards to the operational architecture, uh, as you will see in the videos, there are quite a lot of tools on running at the same time because if you want to do traceability for example between cameo and uh, i don't know enterprise architect you need somehow to have cameo and enterprise architect connections inside the engineering studio so you need a window where you have cameo content or a or a screen 
which is the case we suggest, and then you can have in one screen uh, Cameo, in the other screen you can have Enterprise Architect, or you can have split Enterprise Architect and Doors here, and you can split have Cameo here, and you can have, I don't know, um, Team Center there, and then here you can have a traceability part, and here you can have a quality part, and then at the end you can split your screen in, in, in many different uh, sections. And that's because of this approach, much more by far much more necessary we think that just one single monitor even if it is web-based so that's the other story now i'm done i've just i've just uh, defined a little bit the framework and described the engineering studio let's get into the most interesting in this webinar features which are connectivity interoperability support to technical management and life cycle management support okay let me start with connectivity here it is a little bit what we offer you have a source tool whatever whatever source tool on the 40 that we connect if you have your own and you don't have and we don't have a connection to this tool and you would like to have it there's not big issue you just just contact uh, our people and we in we have done so many times we have so many reusable architectural elements that for us to create uh, new connectors if the api allow that it is a matter of few very few person months okay and uh, and you get everything that you see here for your connection everything just mainly because we represent all the connections content everything in the same way okay so that's why it is possible to do it more or less differently so what we have is we have some content or some functionality so we have some content or some functions that exist in the source to whatever what we do is we retrieve this content using APIs. So we use, we need, and we want to use the tools that are the source, because these tools are those that know how to work with it. So we work in, um, in, in APIs, connecting with the APIs of the tool. And these allow us, when the API allow us to read and, and, and write and uh, retrieve and, uh, and update and create whatever operation in the in the sourced uh, environment and uh, of course um, we once we get all this content we can provide at our level technical management as we said so you can of course uh, manage the quality of whatever element it is in here if in cameo you have models in logical architecture with XML, then you can manage the quality and you can do traces between cameo elements and whatever other connection or you can do change request and change management on Cameo elements based on the engineering studio capabilities. Or you can do knowledge management and compare that, that against the bill of materials because you have it in the ontology. So you can do whatever, whatever is possible to be done with whatever connection just by simply connecting it. And the changes, and what we do is we save all those changes in the repository. Sorry, sorry, we save all the content in the repository. And you will eventually be afraid saying you save the content on the repo and that's what we do yes we need to do it mainly for uh, purposes of um, clear maintainability of the information we provide so all the technical management information that we provide let's say the quality of the model is only valid if you don't change the content in your source. So suppose you have written a, a very strong specification and requirements indoors. And then you analyze the quality of this requirement specification using RQA. And you get a very, very strong quality, um, positive quality value. So these requirements are valid, are good. And suddenly, next time you connect in the engineering studio, you see that there's 25 requirements have been changed just by engineers working directly in Word without us. Remember that our ecosystem of, um, of work is just that you con we connect to the tools, which mainly means that you can connect to the tools through us or go directly to the tools by yourself, your engineers. So that means that you can do whatever change you want indoors without us knowing it. So we have to be smart enough to see at every single time what are the changes you have done. OK, so that's it. Uh, and then we just simply store them in the repository and make a low uh, allowance of this information to other connections. So we connect to content in one side and to uh, functions in the other one. So what it means that if you have some functionality that you want to be reusable, you can do it in any way. For example, in Excel. 
Let me show it now very quickly, the, the one or two videos that I'm going to show. Oh, here, sorry, give me, I have in the, in the other screen. I'm going to bring it here and start it again. There it is. So um, uh, here is how you can feel um, Engineering Studio. This is the connectivity workbench. So you create a new connection. And here you have um, all well, many of the connections that we you can use. And, uh, and I'm, I'm going to go very quickly. You define uh, for IBM doors, whatever it is, and then you got the card. If you double click in the, in, in the card, what you get is connection to IBM doors, get all the requirements. And once you get all those requirements, then you can do operations with it. And you can see it, here it is, okay? And you can um, start now changing things here, or create a new element, and then when you save here, you know, those uh, requirement changes, besides they have been managed by versions and quality and, and, and verification and validation, traceability, you will see in a while, then they, they are managed. Okay, I'm finishing here because I'm a little bit out of time. And I'm gonna show you the same concept now, but in a modeling tool. And that's enough, you, we can, I can show you trends 38 more times the same thing, but I think for you it's going to be enough to understand that in the same way we connect to everything. Okay, now you get here, this is Cameo modeling, and um, in Cameo you have your models and everything, and what we are going to do now is we're going to Engineering Studio, and uh, you, you saw before in, in the tool several cards, and Excel and doors, and of course you can now uh, select another uh, connector and, and then you define a lot and then you get this connector here and now inside the engineering studio you get the content of command you can see that you can start doing things and of course let me tell you that we are not replacing cameo cameo is a very nice tool and it do, does a lot of things the only thing we are doing is connecting to cameo so we, you can see that you, we can bring the snapshots. And of course, because of uh, the need of interoperability, you can change things and you can add new elements and you can do all these things. But all the strong capabilities for authoring that Cameo has must be maintained. So the only thing we are going to do here is change and change and change and change and change and change things. And then when those things are changed, you see here that the guy saves again. And when it is saved, it is coming to Cameo. And and why do we want to do this capability? Well, mainly for two reasons. First, for interoperability, as you will see in a while, and then later on, for the possibility to, uh, of course, uh, be able to manage, sorry, I finished that, be able to manage the possibility to uh, generate uh, elements between different tools, for example, Team Center and Cameo, and we need to be able to generate models. So that's the first thing why we do that. Okay, we have uh, connections to many others, Capella, well, here to name, to Polarion, to Word, uh, Capella, Rhapsody, Simulink, and then we have connections to, uh, to Excel for functions, proposals, and so on. The, the last uh, or the next uh, capability I want to show you is interoperability, which mainly means to do things between connections. The, the first thing I've shown you is that we connect to one and we connect to the other one and to the other one in the same framework. And we are going to have all of them at the same time uh, opened in our tool. So that means that you can now start getting the content in one and, and providing uh, results in other one. For example, for example, you have a number in Simulink. This number is gathered by Engineering Studio, and then this number is sent to this particular number is sent to Cameo model. And for example, then in Cameo you simulate something, and then you get this number into a Word, and from, and you and you send it to Word for whatever requirement the spec definition. So you can do this kind of interoperability operations. Okay, I'm going to name now the videos, and if you feel interest, please tell me. So here I show you interoperability between a Cameo model and a Capella model. So you can flow a Cameo model inside a Capella model. Uh, and here is the round trip. So you can go back from Capella to Cameo. And it's, I think it's interesting because it has been designed pre uh, precisely to do that, to be able to round trip several times models between uh, two environments so that 
information of the transformation is being sent from one tool to the, to the other one in case of interest in coming back. Here in this other video, for you to decide if you want to see it or not, uh, you can see interoperability between Word and Excel. And uh, okay, it seems not too interesting. I think it is very interesting. Indeed, my intention is to show you everything that I am uh, describing. I mean, interoperability, connectivity, uh, traceability, configuration management between Word and other tools. So that's, that's what I would like to have time to show you. Not because of any reason, just because uh, I think that if you put all these capabilities in whatever tool, whatever, then it becomes a very strong and proper uh, systems engineering management tool, particularly Word, because it has a lovely way to, to write uh, natural language text, which at the end is what we read. We never have to forget that what humans read in order to do certification and verification is natural language. If we don't read models, even if we think that is very nice, and I can assure you, uh, you know that I'm a professor, as uh, Cecilia introduced me, I can assure you that I do year after year tests to readability. And if I give you a model without any text, you are not going to understand it, even if you are a super expert in, uh, in modeling reading. But uh, we humans understand natural language. And that's the why uh, it is quite interesting. That. So here in this video, we just uh, have a simulation environment in Excel and we execute or simulate the requirements while they are being written in Word in this case, but if they can be written indoors, of course, and be simulated. Another simulation capability is, for example, this one where we use Team Center and Simulink. So we get the requirements in Team Center and then we generate a, a state machine model, we, we send it to Simulink and we evaluate this uh, simulate this state machine in Simulink and the results back. Here we have natural language text written in a connection, I think it's in Excel. And we generate uh, natural, natural re language requirements describing CCML uh, elements, properties, features, hierarchies, uh, associations, state machines, and they are being built a CCML model in Cameo, I think is this one. Here we do some LTL uh, uh, generation based on natural language requirements. He generates some models in Modelica. He uh, do some interoperability between Magic Pro and Simulator. And then, and then we have um, other videos where we connect within Word, inside Word, which has connect uh, Capella, a simulation machine on Excel, and the, the whole Word itself for writing some requirements. And here is a little bit more complex, the same video. Uh, here we execute requirements inside Rhapsody, uh, sending them to an FMU, okay, with a connection to an FMU, and then we send them. Technical management, uh, that's the strength of reuse. So of course we have been doing this quite a lot of time. And the message I think I've sent it to you before, we have around 40 connections. No, more than 40, I think is, yes, over 40. 41 or 42, so no more, more, no more than that. And um, as soon as you get one connection, then whoop, we provide traceability, quality, configuration, BMV, security, knowledge, information, and so on. So here they are, the ISO 15288 technical management processes, and, um, and their intention is to cover them all completely. Okay. I have these videos, and if we have time, and I, if you feel interest, uh, I would like to show them to you. And the, here it is, how can we manage all these technical management processes within uh, the engineering studio in one application. In this case, Microsoft Word. Of course, again, the selection is because of whatever reason. I mean, it's not because we have this product. We have this product, but we can do all those things in whatever environment, indoors uh, or in, in, in uh, Polarion requirements or in PTC requirements or in BNG requirements or in Capello models, Cameo models, or in Simulink or in Modelica. And the, the, the more time you give us, the more, let's say, physical part, physical components management will be included in here. Today, it's, it's, it's quite a lot much more in the logical modeling than the physical one. So creating connections um, for um, producing Word as a requirements management tool, managing traceability, you have not seen traceability managing, but you can imagine that it is as simple as opening two connections and creating the traces, uh, managing versions, managing quality, managing VMV, managing configuration of attributes, and managing change requests. 
that's what is uh, I have to uh, pre uh, prepare for you. Although there are many, many different other videos that I have it here. Of course, we don't have time to do that. But you can see for traceability a little bit what is the way we do one connection, the other connection, and select uh, different elements. And here we have videos for managing traceability. You can see manage traces, smart suspect links, that all the suspect links uh, approach that have to be done. If you change something in, in here, this trace must be put in suspect. Of course, of course, in this uh, webinar, I don't have time to tell you, but feel free to contact us. Of, of course, because of our artificial intelligence capabilities, we can do something very, very important in our opinion for your work which is we can suggest traces between two different um, um, connections. So that means that the, the, the really burden job of looking for what are the traces to be maintained can be done in an automatic way, okay? And then of course, some kind of, of uh, graphical visibility. In, in RQA, I presume you guys, sorry, I don't know how many you are and I don't know if you are skilled or not on the on the past uh, commercial products of reuse, but all these tools are in the market for many many years. So it's all the quality management of models, of requirements, test cases, and whatever this can be done using RQA. Uh, verification and validation is the same. All our products, uh, VMB Studio, that manage all the evidences that exist, and in here, of course. It's clear you have connections to the items to be very verified, connections to the source items. And what we do is we just store the evidences, videos or digital signs or quality values that's, that, that defines the evidences for you to certify your products. Okay, it's a, it's a very good help. Here you have some video snippets on that. And now, <coughs> configuration management, which is what we cover in configuration management. We cover in our approach versions of whatever connection, configurations of projects, that means the versions of a particular connection, let's say version two of Word with version five of Capella, models with version eight of Simulink, with version five of Excel, with version two of a project and so on. This configuration is to save us a snapshot. All the change management, change requests, acceptance or, or not, and then of course the impact of the changes based on traceability. That's what we offer in in uh, configuration uh, in configuration management. And the last one, before I let you drive me in the videos you would like to see, is lifecycle management. And here the concept I hope that you like. The concept is we have now as i have shown you the possibility to connect to many 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 different tools providing in a way the concept of a connection to a particular module or database or model or file in a particular tool can be an activity in a workflow so that i can define my own project workflow with the usage of my tool. So instead of defining activities that are in a way non-operative, I need to do the stakeholder requirements. That could be a stakeholder requirements uh, de de development, could be a typical activity in a workflow of a systems engineering lifecycle management uh, process. Instead of that, which mainly means nothing because then you have to go to doors and do it, our intention was just to create the activity as the activity to connect two doors and do it. So the lifecycle uh, management concept here is that you define the workflow of the chain of uh, dependencies in your project. For example, suppose that you have a Ministry of Defense or a DOD or whatever you are affected by that are describing a kind of needs or a kind of a standard definition that you have to follow or whatever, and they just send this documentation that for you is extremely important because you have to trace the the the, the different um, work products that you produce afterwards towards what you get in the beginning so for you this can be the beginning of everything or even more it can be a video from the ceo or whatever then what you have to do is uh, some organizational needs that are, has to be pro provided by microsoft word in a document and then after that you would have to do some uh, st stakeholder requirements in this case in Polarion together with a kind of uh, functional capabilities model in Capella 
And once you have that, then you have a decision gate together with your boss and the ministry. And if the decision gate is passed through different KPIs, then you can carry on, which particularly means that you have a tier one where you're going to share a Rhapsody model. Of course, you need a kind of um, accessibility approach where you have the choice to uh, to access or share from your environment uh, these models. So at the end, you're going to share or connect to the same environment. You can do, of course, many other things like you can send it back and forth, as I told you, between Cameo, Capella, Rhapsody, or whatever. But let's say that in this case, you have to connect to this Rhapsody model, which is shareable. And uh, besides that, in your own organization, you're going to do some kind of uh, logical and physical modeling using Simulink and Cameo, and then follow the same as, as complex as you would like. Okay, that would be a little bit the, the, the way to create a lifecycle management concept. And this is also supported in, in ESS. So every single activity that you see here, this one is a package, and this one is a Capella activity, and this one seems to be an Excel one, and this one seems to be, I don't know, because I don't see, and you can have a team center, Cameo, Capella, whatever you're using. So that you create a workflow of activities where you can get, here it is, where you can get KPIs on the fly of how everything is going. So if you are doing some Capella models uh, and you have some metrics that define how complete is the Capella model based on your uh, metrics, then you can get immediately to hear how a co completeness is going for this activity. And, and this is a little bit the concept. And uh, of course, there are some videos that show all the, the, everything that I have been telling you. Here is how to create a lifecycle template. Here is how to run a lifecycle based on the KPIs. Here is uh, the Gantt view of this approach. I don't. I can. I can tell you that uh, this is version one of this lifecycle management process. Of course, in in further versions, we will be very, 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 very much better than now because now first version one, I'm sure, is not complete with everything you would need. But uh, but I think it, this approach can be improved very, very well, and it will be improved in the future versions of Obsess. We are running in version 22. Uh, of obsess, which is the first version in the bucket. Okay, then you get here some versions that you can version the project itself completely. Uh, and you can, have, of course, have some dashboards. And then, of course, you can have some configuration management of, of the whole project. So, uh, summary mm, what is SES indeed? It says is the intention of us to produce. A SELM, a, 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 a systems engineering PLM, if I say it in a wrong way, for uh, organizations that would like to reuse the complete ecosystem of environments that they have in their organization. Uh, in most of the times, we don't think that is a good idea that you wipe out everything that you have and you purchase a huge environment to start changing the whole organization with integration projects of millions of euros or yens or dollars and uh, changing the whole organization or architecture and structure. We don't think this is a good idea. We think that it's much cheaper, much more effective and much better to uh, create a layer of lifecycle management just by connecting the tools that you already have. And if you have some need of improving the tools at the authoring part, if you think that Capella or you think that, I don't know, Katia, is uh, good but you want to change it into some Siemens environment then you do it seamlessly you have some uh, Katia company uh, uh, teams there you start with a new team without breaking in this in, and, and doing anything uh, um, radical at the organization you collaborate between those teams and then one uh, once you think that one of the team is good you can transfer all the assets from one to the other if of course it's allowed by the different API tools and this is everything done seamlessly without, okay, I take a strong PLM from whoever and I put it in there and that's it. Now I need uh, 10 years of, of integration and I need to train uh, 400 persons. And that seems for us to be, as reuse, to be a little bit too much and by far extremely much more expensive than other solutions like that. And we do that through connecting to uh, tools, to tools ecosystem, uh, allowing uh, integration and automatization of the processes, of the technical processes by interoperability between the connections. Of course, 
doing something that seems to be stupid, but I think it's the core of the success in the in the project development, which is to control, maintain, digitalize, and take decisions based on technical management. So I always have been thinking that technical management is as important, if not more, than the technical processes. Do whatever you want to do, but do it right. Okay. So if you don't want, I don't know, if you don't want to do logical modeling, okay, okay, that's good. You don't want to do logical modeling, that's good. But then do an extremely strong verification and validation approach. So then you are not doing logical modeling, of course, that's your decision. But if your BMV process goes well, okay, that's it. So I always think that quality, traceability, change management, configuration management, of course, verification, validation is by far more important than just doing, I don't know, a system analysis because it is said in the standard. Okay. If you need systems analysis, do it, of course. If you want to do it, of course. But it's more important, perhaps, to do this technical management approach. And then, of course, some kind of order of all these tool ecosystem chaos that usually exist. I can tell you that I know organizations uh, doing aircraft that have more than more than hundred of tools using for producing uh, aircraft. More than hundred different tools. Okay, this is this is a nightmare. So here we are. I'm done. Uh, I have uh, all those minutes for you guys to tell me what, what you would like uh, to see. And I hope that uh, I have just raised some interest for you to tell me what you would like. Thank you very much, Cecilia. Thank you very much, Juan. Uh, Juan will answer your questions in a minute. So if you want to ask him anything or if you want to see any of the videos he mentioned, uh, please tell us in the questions section. Meanwhile, I will tell you about one of our upcoming webinars. It's called Requirements Management, Managing Data Over Entire Life Cycles. Requirements are essential to all systems and software engineering activities. Uh, management of requirements uh, as set out in ISO 29148, System and Software Engineering, Life Cycle Processes, Requirements Engineering. Uh, focuses on the management of requirements changes and avoiding requirements creep during the life cycle. However, it's often practical to set a broader scope for requirements management. This webinar aims to show how the CES Engineering Studio can provide efficient and appropriate support for requirements management by combining powerful CES Engineering Studio's features with its unique ability to connect to a wide, wide a range of applications and file formats where requirements and related data are produced. The dates for this webinar are the 14th and 16th of June. Uh, so let's see if we have some uh, questions. Uh, hi Juan, uh, thanks for the presentation. Uh, from the number of videos that you mentioned, uh, could you please show us how the CES uh, could help us migrating from CISML models to another environment? I think that you mentioned Capella. Our organization has many use cases where our customer needs uh, to share models with us, but they use Arcadia methodology and we use CISML modeling tool. How can this be done? Okay, um, thank you very much uh, for the question. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah. Let me go here. Yeah. So, uh, right, you're you're really right in your question. Um, there are many, many cases uh, where, because of um, different organizations working in, particularly, I think, in most cases, very large projects, seem to be in defense, uh, seems to be those projects really in defense, yes. Um, uh, the 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 need of sharing um, specific models, if not part of the models, um, between organizations is of course very 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 important and very necessary, and that's not a big problem. But in order to do that, there are two solutions. I mean, there are two needs. Sorry, two needs to happen. The first one is that either everybody in the let's say large set of organizations use the same environment, the same tool, which is, of course, again, the problem that I told you before. Okay, I am, I don't know, I am 
big large uh, defense corporation doing uh, next generation of aircraft uh, fighters and then uh, because of the ministry or the dod is telling me that i have to use cameo then everybody needs to do cameo and well but i've been doing rhapsody all my life all my all my models and processes and all the techniques that i have for checking quality or checking the consistency of the models is in rhapsody no i'm sorry you have to do cameo because we are going to do cameo and that seems to be very very old-fashioned so the second option would be to share so what what uh, it usually happens is that once in our approach you have made the connectivity between different tools the only thing we have to do now is just simply to uh, transform from one to other so you can see here camela what is that cameo yeah and then uh, i'm going to go away quite quickly and then here you have a connection to cameo and i don't think in the previous videos i show you well this remark that this green means the state management that i told you before this green means that this model is first time being included in the repository and that's why it must to be saved in order to to, to we that we can control and maintain everything and now you can see here that it is a capella model so you have Capella on one side, Cameo on the other side. And the only thing we're going to do now is we're going to get into the interoperability um, platform. You can see a little bit why it is nice to have uh, Capella in, uh, in one window, Cameo in the other one, and then of course you can get into the interoperability uh, part in the other one. We will show you here. This screen is the connectivity screen. Here is Cameo, there is Capella. This guy is doing some changes now in Cameo from here, but I'm going to avoid that one. And now suddenly, I'm going here. And now suddenly here, this guy is opening the interoperability platform, which mainly you can see how it is. It is, you define the left, which is the source. You define the right, which is the target. So in the left, you select uh, Cameo, in the right, you select Capella, you can have all the connections that you have already available, and then you define what you want to do. You can do copy, and you can do save, or merge, or whatever. You can do transformations. And with transformation means that you have to do something a little bit different. In this case, where you can see, what this guy is doing is just defining where, you, I don't know if you know, but Capella supports Arcadia. Arcadia is a kind of methodology, CML is a language, Kadia is a methodology, so it defines different sections of or workflow of the um, modeling, uh, logical modeling, and you can have operational view, and you can have a system view, and you can have other views, and then you have to do this mapping. So this mapping is necessary to be defined once, and once you define this transformation for these uh, modules, then you can save that and everybody all the engineers uh, would have this available in the repository so this also now type mapping you have to do it once from csml to, to arcadia and once you do that the only thing you are going to do now is to transfer everything that exists uh, there it is okay so simple everything that exists in the, in the left side cameo just sent back to the corresponding packages in in capella in the other side Okay, the good point is that because of the need of round trip, some information flow is sent, some information on the transformation is sent from the one to the other, so that we can now bring back this model to CCML. Okay, um, and uh, this is the same on the other way back. So um, that's a little bit my answer, uh, Cecilia. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question. Uh, thank you, Juan. I understood that all the technical management processes can be applied to whatever connection. And I have seen in the slides that it is possible to support these processes inside Microsoft Office tools. Oh, yeah. Do you mean that we could use Office in combination with the rest of our systems engineering authoring systems? Uh, yes. Thank you very much for the question, because uh, that's, I would like to show that one. Yeah. Okay uh um here you have a lot of options so let me start very quickly i have a seven minutes i hope that i can show you some uh, videos quickly on the on the flavor that i'm showing so i'm going to show you um uh technical management in this case on top of microsoft word okay so here is a word document the only thing we're going to do is we're going to in a way 
we are going to, in a way, simply said, we're going to bring my IBM doors inside Word, in a way, okay? It's, 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 a, it's I should say, a simile. So uh, what I want is now to define something interesting. I want to understand which are going to be requirements of this Word document. And then what we get inside here is the, the view, the table view that is typical from doors or BNG or, or Polarion or whatever. So you have inside Word the requirements and well, you can move them to another window if you want. This is inside Word, okay? So this window, even if you can put it in another screen, is inside Word. So you can see that you can, um, of course, have a uh, quality on VMV and traceability and everything inside Word. You can save and you can do everything. You can, of course, define, write your requirements in Word, and then they will be included here just by selecting them as requirements. You can write text in Word that are, that are not requirements, and you can do whatever changes from one side or the other one because these two are synchronized. So you have in both sides the um, the requirements in uh, in the side inside Word, or you can have the requirements working and management inside um, the table view. Okay, so I'm going to finish that one here, even if it's a bit longer, to show you traceability because you have not seen traceability. So what you're going to see is traceability, which is being between Word in this case and something else, but it is. Unlimited, unlimited between whatever and whatever. So you're seeing again the engineering studio inside Word with all the capabilities I showed you before. So now you have here a little boy, which is Word in a little part. Here you have the, the, the tree or the, the grid view, but now you have another connection here. In this connection, I think it was Excel. So now you have Microsoft Word little boy here, and uh, you have Excel requirements here. And of course, you could do whatever you can minimize this window and work together between this one and that one but at the end we are going to open now the traceability package inside word the little boy word uh, is somewhere there uh, hidden and um, and now you are going to have one specification word in the other one you can have capella inside here or simulink or cameo whatever and then it's time now to select one requirement to select one model element or whatever and just trace okay so this guy is doing uh, traceable, the things that is necessary to do, define a traceability project and define a traceability module and all those things that happen. And then once you have that, you select one element, select the other one and trace. And of course you can do all these suspect traces you can see there, they, now they are traced. Uh, unlimited connectivity. So you inside Word in this case, or in the engineering studio that I showed you before, without uh, being inside Word, you can open one connection, open other connection and manage the traces in that way. The next one would be quality. I, I don't want to spend more than a minute here because of course you guys know what quality is. So here it is again, Microsoft Word. This guy is clicking in the RQA section. So suddenly you get RQA, everything that you know on RQA from our side. And um, and that's it. That's uh, that's enough. You just now can calculate the quality of the requirements. Okay. So you just go here, and then you can of course author and open the RAT. You see all the requirements quality issue, and of course even if you are inside Word, you can double click and get the RAT, the normal RAT that you know where you get what is wrong and what is not wrong on the requirement and you can change that and do all the authoring based on patterns and everything like that. And uh, finally, I'm going to show you change requests. So I have a one minute, sorry, I don't know if it will be more questions, but I, you can please send right, redirect them to me or to Cecilia. If, if there's. Finally, let's, let me show you some change requests. This is going to work. This is going to work exactly in the same way uh, with whatever connection, whatever. Okay. So um, the first thing we have to do is we have to get the, the connection in change request mode. So this guy has decided to, to create the connection in change request. So now when you open Microsoft Word, Okay, you change, you do change request. You see here, you can the connection say, I want to work in change request mode. This mainly means you have to define some roles, but this mainly means that now when you finish and go back to the source tool, here it is, you will not be able, 
not be able to change the text even if you are inside word so you you can uh, now uh, well it's a lot of roles and a lot of things so now what you can do now as you can see you don't have the choice to change anything the only thing you can do now is to start a change request even if you want to change the word document you will not be able to change it because it's blocked and then it happens indoors and it happens all over in the different connections so there's no possibility to do any operation the only thing you have to do is you see start a change request when you start the change request suddenly everything is open but the, the issue is that you are not changing the word document you're changing something in between okay so you can do now all the changes that you would like here you are change create new requirement do whatever it is inside word but nothing is going to happen until you go into the change request management and you go one by one checking the changes there you are and once you accept or reject those changes okay i'm going quickly once you change accept or reject those, those changes then you can go back and see that everything is done so here it is from my side Cecilia. okay thank you juan and thank you very much everybody for attending if you have any further questions or want more information, don't hesitate to contact us by email or through our website, reusecompany.com. Thank you very much and goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye.